Hello, hello, everybody. Should we tell them the uh, the bad news first? Bad news first? Yeah, sure. Bad news first. Sure. On the terrible news. This is the last time that uh, you guys will be seeing us for the remainder of the year. So uh, you can cry your sad tears now. Um, but yeah, this is, this is going to be our final Tuesday call of, uh, 2021. Some people are finally like, finally, uh, <laughs> what's up crew. Uh, feel free to say, uh, hello in the chat box. Please let us know you're out there. Let us know that you can hear us nice and clearly. Um, and we'd love to just hear how it's going for you. Um, Holidays, end of year, how are you feeling? What's cooking? Are you excited? Are you feeling dismay? All the things. So as we kind of uh, wait for more people to pop in here, I'll just give you guys a, a brief uh, overview, especially if you're brand, brand new uh, to the group here, to Satori Prime, to the work that we do in the transformative space. Feel free to uh, let us know if you're new to the community. I know a lot of you guys will be watching this on replay as well. So we invite you to do the same. We do um, read through the comment thread uh, over the days and weeks here. And so does our team. So if you need anything at all, please uh, let us know, especially in how we can support you specifically. Um, if it is your first time with uh, myself and Elon, uh, my name is Guy. Yonder is uh, Elon. Um, we are... Uh, <laughs> we are uh, brothers and we've been in business together now for, I don't know, 17 years, Elon? What are we going on? I think what? 2009. No, 2004 is early. Maybe 2006 we started working together. We started working together. I mean, not here, but 2006, I believe. I think 2006, right? So what's that? 15, in almost finance, 16 years. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. Elon and I have done the uh, the dance. Um, we, we used to work uh, in a private um, on a private bank and a funding facility for real estate. Uh, after the economy went kabunk in 2008, we, uh, we left that world. And at that time we had been in personal development space and, and coaching, um, for quite some time. And that was definitely our life's passion at the time. And so when, uh, when the economy tanked, we decided that we would transition and do something completely different. And we got heavily involved in uh, the online space and business building, entrepreneurial mentoring. Um, and we did that really successfully for a number of years. We were top affiliates um, in, uh, in an organization that helped people establish online businesses. And we were uh, educators and we used to fly all over the world and do these pretty extensive classes on um, marketing sales and uh, um, basically like you know positive psychology, so to speak. And um, over the years, we, f we just realized that the only reason we were doing that anyway was because we loved working with people and coaching them and, and helping them uh, better their lives. And as our understanding of, of psychology grew, of our understanding of how to do deep healing work, um, we got introduced to the shamanic world and plant medicines and how to do energy healing and go into higher states of consciousness through meditation. That kind of just naturally sprung up this, this opportunity to, to be leaders in the thought space and the healing space. And so that's kind of what you're looking at now and what we've become is as these coaches in the space and um, we're ex exalted because this year we have grown a fantastic uh, online community here north of 20,000 people and we have uh, incredible community going through our training and you know just the the daily reports we get on what people are going through are, are both um, heartfelt sometimes really sad and then just absolutely incredible when they start coming out the other end of it so uh, these conversations on Tuesdays are, are really your opportunity to uh, find out what this conversation is to find out how you can participate if you so choose in some of the programs and offerings and experiences that we have here and every week you can expect us to have a, a bit of a different topic 
but you know, it's all with the same common thread here, which is at the end of the day is like, how do we, how do we heal ourselves? How do we transform what's happening in our lives? Uh, how do we consistently grow, have better relationships, make more money, you know, and really just enjoy life uh, in ways that most people have never gotten to explore because they're so stuck, uh, keyword for today, you know, being stuck um, in old habits, in old ways of thinking, um, in just patterns that were given to them, uh, passed down through their lineage and family and, and culture and stuff like that. And so we're all in some degree boxed in on that. And so today we want to talk about, you know, what what creates these situations for people? Like, why is it that so many people are, are stuck in relationships they don't want to be in, stuck with finances that never seem to grow and are always trying to survive or stuck in their health or always seem to be in relationships that are causing them um, negativity or problems or a lot of angst? Uh, why are they stuck in anxiety? You know, like all these different areas. So uh, what I would recommend is just look at an area of life right now that you feel stuck in, whether it's health, wealth, um, relationships, anything in that realm is probably something you can pick at. And as we have this conversation, I would directly apply it to that area of your life. So you can see how, or you can at least take a look at how applying some of the things that we are talking about here uh, might affect that area of life in a way that you've just never looked at before or never thought of before, okay? Yeah, so, um, I'm going to let you ring it through today. Okay. Sounds good. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that we hear quite a bit and uh, people that we work with is most people when they find us uh, are, are in a state of stuckness. And I just want you as, as I'm sharing this, if you're, if you resonate with this or if you found us in this condition um, to just also chime in, because I think it's always important for other people and that's why we've built this amazing community, which, by the way, is over 22,000 of you. So love to all 22,000 amazing souls out there that have found their way to here. Um, for us to share, you know, in our human experience of, hey, this is where I'm at. Because I think one of the things that we lose sight of because we're so, like, singularly focused is we lose sight that we're human and we're all going through a human experience. And we tend to think that our human experience is somehow special and more difficult or more. And like, you know, Guy and I have had the chance to coach tens of thousands of people at this place. And I can tell you that as, as unique as we all think we are, uh, mm -hmm. we all go through very, very similar things. Like we all go through incredible heartache or disappointment or abandonment or um, feeling like we don't belong or feeling like we aren't good enough or whatever that version is, right? Like we all have ours. Um, Guy and I are actually, or I don't know if Guy is, but I'm listening to uh, Will Smith's memoir that he wrote. And I think most people would consider Will Smith to be like, you know, 0.00000001% of what you would consider as like the most ideal life. You know, I've never really met anyone that's like, I hate Will Smith. Um, he's just lovable. He's amazing. You know, he's had an incredible career. And you listen to this memoir and you're like, holy shit, the things this man has gone through and continues to go through, right? And it just reminds us all that like, so the reason I say, you know, if you, if you resonate with this and you want to share a little bit about your story in the comment box so that people can kind of relate and go, oh my God, I can't tell you how many times people have shared something, a video, a comment, something in our group, and then others will be so grateful and will come to us and say, oh, I saw this video and that's what had me uh, actually start working with you guys because you don't know how your story can inspire others. So I just want to create that as kind of a baseline, but stuckness, like what's stuckness and how do we define stuckness here? So a lot of the times we find that people that end up finding Satori prime in this work is because they've done a ton of personal development work already. Most people don't find Satori prime as the first stop on their journey into personal development, right? Like 
most of you, and we ask this at every single one of our live events, so I, I know this, but like most of you have read dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of books around spirituality, personal development, mindset, and the like, right? Most of you have watched endless amounts of videos ranging from Esther Hicks to Tony Robbins to uh, Les Brown to Wayne Dyer to Eckhart Tolle. Like you're out there constantly consuming information. And what we've noticed is people tend to find Satori Prime when they're at this kind of pivotal moment in their journey. And we talk quite about a little, uh, quite a bit about this, which is this moment where the books keep sounding all the same. It's right. Like someone says it this way or that way, but it's basically like your mind's like, Oh yeah, yeah I've heard that before. But the results in your life aren't where you believe that they should be. And it's a little disheartening at that moment because that seeker part of you is constantly out there trying to find the next best guru and the next best book and the next best concept or idea because in the back of your mind is this notion that like, I must be stupid and I must be missing something because I've done all this. I've invested all my time. I invested all my energy and here I am still dealing with this shitty relationship. Still, still dealing with not being able to get my finances in order, still dealing with health issues, still dealing with overwhelming, like overwhelm, anxiety, stress. Maybe you can't get over grief from a loss. Like you're just kind of, it, it's not working anymore. And um, I had a very interesting encounter, uh, which I don't believe in chances, but it was, it was just a cool encounter. So I, I want to share it here quickly. Um, I play a lot of tennis and I was out on the tennis court and I happened to meet this new, uh, through a friend, this new guy to play tennis with. And we're all sitting there and he's asking me questions and telling me how he's, you know, he's like nervous all the time and he has these to-do lists. And if he doesn't knock things off on the to-do list, he gets like really anxious. And so anyway, we start having this conversation and I'm sharing things with him that can help him. And these four women walk onto the court and this one woman like leaves the pack and just kind of like, I can see her kind of like leaning in and she goes, I'm really sorry. I'm totally eavesdropping, but I'm really interested in what you're saying right now. And she asked me, can this, what you're talking about also work with grief? And I sat there and I was just in this state of awe, first of all, of like how everything transpired. Mm -hmm. Um, but mostly what I was just left with is this notion that like most humans go through their life and have no idea that there are simple, practical tools that can shift life from this place of feeling stuck or overwhelmed or anxious or just a lot. You know, it's like life can just be a lot, whether it's your relationship with your kids, whether it's things at work, whether things with money, like it's just a lot. And for some crazy reason, like we have all trained each other that that's the way life is supposed to be. Like everyone's going through it. it it's all supposed to suck. And it's all supposed to be this really hard grind thing of life. And I can tell you, and I'm sure there's plenty of people here that can that can chime in as well like life doesn't have to be that way yeah at all and so she asked me she's like you know how you know how how can i get over this and i said that's what you just said is the problem and she was like what and i was like that's the mentality how can i get over this yet when we say over it's like I want to find the shortest, quickest way to stop feeling the way that I'm currently feeling. And so for her, she's like, I play tennis every day. And for two hours, I don't have to think or feel this. And I was like, yeah. I get that. But it always comes back, right? And she goes, yeah. And I said this line to her that you guys have probably read in a million books and it is the only way out is through. 
And people come to find this work, not Guy or I or not Satori Prime. It's like the way I explain it to people, there's some energetic healing bubble that has been created here. That Guy and I, for whatever reason, have been able to create and transmit along with our coaches and our team and all that stuff. And it's, it's, it's a palatable field. That when people walk into, whether you've done our meditations, so you're kind of like more on the periphery of it, right? Like maybe you've done our meditations and have had incredible healing things happen where all of a sudden you're crying. Like we get these messages all the time. Like I cry like every single time I do it and then I feel absolutely amazing, right? So that's kind of like on the periphery. And there's people that end up joining our live event, right? So now they're coming closer into the field and then they get to kind of sit in the field for two days. And there's then people that go to level one or level two and level three. And each level basically brings you more into the center of this healing field. Okay. And what this field is capable of doing is it's capable of creating a space within yourself that allows you to finally turn inwards and be with and feel with all the way through the things that you have avoided like the plague for decades. Because you thought that if I ever experience that thing again, I will die. And maybe you didn't think that up here, but this is how your mind is relating to actually going in and being with that. Mm -hmm. So to use this woman as an example, right? Like when you lose someone, so she had lost her father, right? When you lose someone, that is not a joyride. I don't care how you slice it. That's not something that like I can tell you that I'm going to snap my fingers and all of a sudden it's going to be like rainbows again. That's going to bring up a lot of stuff. And, you know, everyone always says I, I talk about this all the time. Everyone always says that uh, when they have that kind of experience, it's like my heart is broken. And I just said flat out, I was like, if something is broken, if your phone's broken, like you can't use it, it's a paperweight, right? But when you're in these moments, it's not correct to say your heart's broken because in essence, what you're doing is, it's not that you're not feeling anything. You're feeling everything. Like everything is felt and it is overwhelming because there's so much sensation. So it's not that it's broken. It's actually like hyperactive open. And that sends your system into a tirade because it doesn't want to feel those things. All those things that it's now all of a sudden feeling. It's like, I have tried my damnedest for decades to not feel these things. And so when we talk about feeling stuck, stuck comes from this place of constantly being out here, trying to make sense of everything trying to figure out how to manage yourself and these aspects of yourself through different numbing techniques, through different like, I don't want to think about or feel this techniques, whatever you have, right? Like all these different strategies that we create. But because you're in that, guess what never goes away? The actual thing that is wanting to be healed never goes away. Because you, it like, pops up and you're like, no, 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 I need to figure out a way around this. And then it pops up again and it pops up again and it pops up again and it pops up again. And that's what leads to this innate feeling of just stuck and desperation and like, oh, how am I here again? Hmm. Because the energy around it, like the energy behind the action is not one of healing, but it's one of numbing or managing or figuring out or getting over. And so if you've brought yourself here, whatever part brought you here, I want you to just pause for a minute and acknowledge it. As scary as this whole conversation might be for you right now, because there's parts of you that are like, I'm not fucking touching that. <laughs> I'd rather read that other book. This work is not for the faint of heart, but some aspect of you brought you here to this field. And just check for yourself, like, are you at a place in your life, kind of like I described, where you've done all that work? And if you actually don't listen to the mind, but like feel through your heart, 
is there a part that's actually fully ready for healing to happen? Like, are you ready to feel unstuck? Maybe you don't know how to get there and that's okay. That's a perfectly okay place to be. But can you find that part of you that's actually wanting the healing to happen now? Not just more understanding. Yeah, good opener. Um, so here's what I want to tell you guys. I think where where a lot of where what I've seen and I've seen in my own life and I've seen with people where we get stuck and you know so uh, Natalie says you know feeling stuck feels awful. Couldn't agree more because there is no action. So there's a lot of truth and non-truth in what she's saying, which is kind of true in, in all things, right? It's it's like always a both and conversation. So. She, she's right in the fact that like the way that people take action to resolve issues in their life doesn't help them at all. Okay. Because what they're constantly doing is thinking that there's a one proper solution for getting out of the mess that they're in. And so their mind, and you think about the subconscious, the subconscious works in a very literal way, right? For those of you guys who had a lot of uh, training around linguistics and ontological practices, you probably are, manage your language better than most people. You understand that if something negative comes out of your mouth, there's a negative energy to that. And in a way, there's a part of you that's listening, which is your subconscious. And it's extremely literal in how it it listens to what it is that you're saying and thinks that you're asking it to carry out a command, so to speak, right? Because the subconscious part of ourselves is the part that's connected to, to the ethereal. It's the part that's connected to spirit. Okay. And as we give that directives through language, through culture and things like this, the energy that's being emitted through this part of you, and it lives in your solar plexus, if you don't know this, kind of like this area here and behind your stomach, which for a lot of people, if they actually tune into this area is uh, compressed, there's a, a squeezing that happens there on a regular basis. And so there's not a lot of free flowing energy over there because it's, it's all this negative programming that's come. So the reason I say it's true and not true is because she's right. The no action is finally getting to a place of fully surrendering that this is what you're dealing with. And that there's no external action that you could take that ultimately will, it may kind of resolve it on the surface, right? Like you can change your job or, you know, shift relationships or do something about your health. But underneath what's not going to change is the underlying sensation that you feel in your body. And so Elon's pointing at Will Smith, and I'll say this too, I didn't read the book, but I watched his like mini documentary. And I often say this, you know, when we look at successful people, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, you know, Will Smith, you, you pick people that society is kind of like looking up to. People think that they're successful because they figured something out and that they have less distortion in their system in some way. And it's because of this that they've figured out how to like transcend the human experience and become this very wealthy person. And a few things about that. Number one, uh, saying that someone is successful because they're rich, I think is a misnomer in our culture. There's plenty of people that I would say are much more successful than the wealthiest people on the planet in terms of just richness of living. Okay. Um, and then uh, the second part is most people don't realize that people like Will Smith, who learned to be an entertainer at home because his father was rather emotionally abusive. And he learned, well, as long as I keep my father happy, right. And there we hear this all the time in families where the, father or the mother was drinking heavily or was abusive in some way, there's a kid that kind of like goes internal and hides away. There's the kid that learns to fight. And then there's the kid that learns to, to make everyone laugh, right? And these are just coping mechanisms. And it just so happened to be that Will Smith's coping me mechanism plus acting and being an entertainer yielded him a lot of money. So in his world, it's not like he became successful because he cleared up the distortion. He's successful because of his distortion, right? Exactly. And so that's what we really want to point out is distortions. And so there are, and this is what I want to say that Natalie's point is both true and untrue. She's right. When we surrender, something happens to our systems. We've all been in situations. I've been in one just, just this last month where things are going so sideways, so haywire, seems so out of control. We try, we try, we do, we do. We put our hands in everything. We constantly meddle. It doesn't get better. And eventually we just run out of steam at some point in time. And for those of you guys who've experienced this in the chat box, say, I, when you run out of steam, you finally go, that's it. Fuck it. I don't know what to do anymore. Let the chips fall where they may. 
and and you know you feel like you're hurtling you know to the ground and you're going to go splat and then something in that in that energy something incredible happens and something resolves it something comes along that was unexpected spontaneous synchronistic in nature and you go whoa we want to look at how do we live in a life stream where that's always happening where you don't have to get to the the bottom of the barrel where things are so difficult to give up but you actually learn how to live in a state of surrender that is something you can teach somebody over time. And so the other aspect here is that when most people approach problem solving, again, they're so narrow in their view on how they're going to resolve that problem. They think they already know what it's going to look like and feel like and this and that. And so they're constantly looking for that feedback from the world. And if they don't get that exact feedback, they go, well, this must not be it. Let me move on. Let me do this other thing. Yep. So I want to throw something at you that's a little bit different here. Because what I actually want to throw at you is, is, is mastery. Right, like we all want to be in well-being. We all want to be connected. We all want to feel safe. I would say that's like fundamental to being a human being. Now, if you want those things, I want you to imagine when you feel safe, when you feel connected, you know, all those kind of things that most of the problems you have in your life would either diminish, you know, greatly or just completely resolve themselves. Because ultimately, what we're all really addicted to, and what we're all really self-absorbed about, is the way that we feel. It, we attach to the externalities and we think, oh, well, that thing is making me feel good, but it's not because how long does anything outside of yourself really make you feel good? Like that long, right? And then you're right back to this, this part that doesn't feel well. So what we really want to look at is not how do we resolve something in our lives, but how do we actually cultivate safety and well-being in our system? Full stop right there. Don't worry about the problems that you have. Don't worry about what it is that you're actually dealing with. Because what's sourcing it are these distortions. And what resolves it is, is cultivating more well-being in your system. Now, this is not a practice or something that happens to you in a moment in time. Right? Many of you guys have been through programs. They do, you do great work when you're there. You do intensives and stuff like that. And you have these breakthroughs. And they're not you know this. They're not sustainable if you don't sustain that practice. Period. Because what you're not cultivating is more of a foundation of well-being, right? So what I want to say here is like different than pretty much every other program I've ever gone to that makes these extraordinary claims about what you're going to get from a single weekend or a few days of intensive work. They might be a really good program, but at the end of the day, it's up to you, the individual to choose, am I going to master this thing? If I'm going to go do a breathwork class, am I going to be a master of breathwork? If I'm going to if I'm going to work on my energy, am I going to master this energetic flow in my body? And, and my contention is after doing 20 years of work and coaching tens of thousands of people is that those people that are not committed to a daily practice, a daily cultivation of right practice will continue to deal with these different aspects inside of themselves, period. So you may have something very specific that you want to resolve in your life. Well, guess what? It may not be time to resolve that no matter how much mental capacity or energy you put towards resolving that, again, we've all done that and it hasn't resolved for you, guess what? It may not be time because there's something that those circumstances right now, again, if you look at it from like, everything happens for a reason, it's happening for me and through me, right? Like that's in your life right now because there's an opportunity, there's something it's trying to show you and help you heal in your system. And like Elon said, if you take the path around it by trying to figure it out mentally, how to think differently about it or go about it different, you're, you're still not going through that experience, okay? And, you, and then in, in retrospect, anytime anything like that comes and happens and triggers these parts in your system, you're gonna get that feeling right back in the system and you're gonna go right back into the panic, the fear, the anxiety and the stress and the overwhelm that comes along with that. The only way to liberate yourself, the only way to feel freedom is to actually go through that experience and come out the other end, okay? Now, this is where the cultivation of well-being and safety comes in. Because to the degree that we can cultivate a foundation, I'm talking like an energetic foundation of safety and well-being and fluidity in our system, you're gonna find yourself in this space where suddenly experiences that were very scary before to go through, you can actually surrender, relax, and let them be. And what that means is it doesn't mean that you like let horrible things happen to you and that's going through the experience. It means that what you're really avoiding, what most of us are avoiding 
is these sensations that have been in our bodies since we were very little. Sometimes we were born with them because they're from past lives and stuff like that. But these sensations in our body that we have been avoiding and sometimes not even consciously avoiding. It's like a subconscious, like your, your system, like energetically turns away from. And so you actually can't go through that experience. Like your body won't let you. And so there are a few things that we can do. And these are kind of what I want you to, to understand. There's a few actions that we can take every single day to cultivate this. And, and before we finish out here today, we can all sit together in a collective field and we'll do some cultivation work with this. All right. So just hang on tight as I explain this. And I want you to understand right action. The reason we want to figure out what's the right action, not how do I resolve what's going on in my life, but how do I just cultivate well-being period? Like let that be the foundation of your life. Do you think that things would then spring forward differently if, if you, your system literally had a different energy to it than it does right now. Okay, so we want to figure out what the right action is. Then we want to do that regularly. Why? Because that makes it automatic. Okay, so we want to take right action. We want to do that a lot. And then it becomes automatic. When Once we've done something and it's gotten to the point of automation, eventually it becomes subconscious. Okay, for example, you guys who have like, you know, lived somewhere and you've driven the same uh, way to go home, for a long period of time, you know, after a while, it doesn't expend a lot of conscious energy to get in the car and drive in that direction, right? You get there very easily. Sometimes you wonder how you got there at all. It's like you were just lost in thought or you were looking down for too long. And but like, there you are in your driveway, you made it like, thank God that that's something that you've practiced over and over again, cultivated, automated, became subconscious. And now you have a lot more conscious energy, right, to put elsewhere and to create. And so we want to look at everything in this way. How do we create something and do it so regularly that it just ingrains itself into our, our subconscious and then like our body, our energy field literally produces it on automation because anything you're dealing with in your life, any hardship that you're dealing with in your life on a regular basis is subconscious and has been automated and is flourishing out of your system in automation. And so unless you interject with some practices that give your system new information, and then practice that on a regular basis, what you can continue to see is what you've already seen over and over again. Okay. Again, this is not anything different than what do you do with, with your physically exercising, if you were trying to get your health right, like, you know, you got to stop what you're doing and you got to start creating some new habits in your system. Okay. So <clears throat> do you want to, uh, do you want to take a seat and actually do a little practice with these guys? I want to, I want to just offer one other thing here that, cause I just see a lot of people typing in, you know, walking through the valley of the shadow, fear keeps you stuck. Uh, it can seem like we're not growing, but I feel like there are just so many layers. So one of the, when guy was talking about like actions, one of the things that we have seen time and time again, both for our personal journey, right? Like nothing that we share with you guys is something that we just learned yesterday, right? Like, these are cultivated practices. We have been doing work since 2003, right? So like, and, and Guy and I are not just, oh, we went to a seminar once and no, like we went to the seminar and then we assisted the seminar and then we went to the seminar again and then we became lead. Like Guy and I are just every day since the first day that we were introduced to the world of personal development we've had daily practices every day. We've been working with a personal coach in one way, personal coach or mentor, one way, shape or form, almost that entire time, right? Like, and I say this because one of the biggest tips that I can give anyone to get unstuck is to stop doing it on your own. Oh, yeah. How many of you have been walking this path on your own. I mean, you read your own books, you do the videos, you go to a seminar, but you're just on your own, trying to figure it out, trying to walk through this forest on your own. And really like, if this is you, I want you to drop this in because this is important. I want you to get how this is a systemic thing. This is not because you're wired wrong or anything like that. This is just, I want you to see how many people are going to say yes or raise their hand that they've been on their own. 
And this is something that we see time and time and time and time again. Because asking for help and, well, let me take it a step back. Asking for help to your system and to your mind is the ultimate sign of giving up or giving in or weakness. And so we avoid it at all costs. Right, Guy and I always make this joke, like we were the kind of people that if we were like lying in the street, bleeding out, and someone was like, oh my God, do you need help? We'd be like, no, 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 I got it. I'm okay, right? I'll like, be, I'm gonna touch my own arm, it's fine. It's well, fine. I'll be fine, I'll be fine, right? Like to that level. And because of that, that leads to stuckness because the things that you're wanting to heal, no matter how gifted you are, no matter how much effort or work or anything you do, you cannot do on your own. Period. End of story. I don't care who you are, how gifted you are, or how brilliant you are. It does not matter. Can you explain, can you explain why that is? Like what, what is it yeah. that the body actually needs? Yeah. So, so what you can do and what will feel like an aha moment for you and like, you'll get that like short term relief of like, wow, I'm getting somewhere, but it always comes back to the same thing. What you can do on your own is you can get understanding. You can figure out why things happen, how you created this strategy, when it got created, who was there when it got created, all this stuff. And when you have that epiphany, it's like, oh my God, that's why I've been doing all that stuff for the, you know, eternity. And it makes you feel really good in the moment because you feel very accomplished. Like, I got it. But the reason you will never have healing from that is because what the body needs is a template. Just like when kids watch their parents, that creates a template, right? So we have these things called mirror neurons. And this is how every human being, on, this is science. This is how we all learn. By the way, I want to point out that we now know that there are mirror neurons in your mind, in your heart, and in your gut. So we right. need to, we want to rethink our idea of what we think the mind is, because it's not a low, this is a localized awareness of our mind, but we are now starting to clearly understand that there is just an awareness that is, that is I, like the, that is the, right. It, it is all encompassing. And we will probably continue to find mirror neurons everywhere in every major organ and, and all our different energetic faculties, like, and anybody who's explored meditation at a high level, you realize this, that you can unlocalize awareness place it anywhere. And that location within you has a consciousness and information to give and in, in, in a way that it energetically connects to people and to its environment as well. So that's why, for example, when like people would go out and seek Buddha and sit with him or even sit with Jesus or whoever it was, right? It's because I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but when you sit with someone who's, mm -hmm. I'm just going to call an enlightened soul, you, you know, you can fill in the blanks, however you want to do it. Like, you feel different around that person. You don't even know why, but you're like, wow, it feels really good to be around that person. It's because these mirror neurons that are in your nervous system and in your gut and in your heart never received a template of what safety feels like. Mm -hmm. They never had that because we all grew up in homes with parents that didn't know and were doing the best that they can. And that's what we mirrored. And so as much as you want to feel these things through when our system is in a constant state of fight, flight, or freeze, no healing can be done. And 99% of the time, humans are in a state of fight, flight, or freeze from either real scenarios or imagined scenarios. But your nervous system is like in a constant state of like this all the time. <sighs> And that's why when you drink or smoke or take a hit of something or run or anything, and you have that moment where the buzzing stops, sometimes for people like sitting on a beach, right? Like we all, why are we all gravitate to beach vacations? Because sitting on the beach and getting your feet in the sand actually down regulates your nervous system. And so when you can sit with someone who has done a lot of work to create that safety and well-being, what your system falls into is being held. 
it literally feels like an energetic being held. You remember when like you scraped your knee or you got really hurt and like mommy would like really hold you and you felt so warm and cared for and home? Like energetically, this is what this field and what we've trained ourselves and our coaches to do is to be able to hold that for you. And when you're held like that, your system down regulates and it allows you to actually presence and feel all of those things that we talked about in the beginning that you've been avoiding. And I mean like fully feel them through because in your mind right now to feel them through is like, I don't want to do that. That's suicide. But that's because your body is in a constant fight or flight. There's no safety or well-being in your system because you've never received a template of what that can even look or feel like. And so, yes, from that place, wanting to do this work is fucking terrifying. I get it. And it doesn't have to be that way. So step one is realizing I cannot do this on my own. Repeat it after me. I cannot do this on my own. As much as you want to believe that you can, there's plenty of history that you've had that will prove otherwise, right? So and, and notice what comes up when it's like, I can't do that on my own. It's there's disappointment, there's heartbreak, there's sadness, there's upset. Because now the piece comes up, it's like, well, shit, if I can't do this on my own, that means I actually have to ask for help. And that's going to kick up a whole other storm of stuff. Not good enough, loser, worthless, no one cares about me. No one will ever be there for me. I can't trust people. I'm weak. I'm nobody. And that doesn't feel good either. And they all came here to like get inspired. (laughs) But like just notice the repetition, like that cycle that you keep putting yourself on. So this here, Satori Prime is an invitation. An invitation, an open door invitation to not do this on your own anymore. And I I don't, I don't mean to like pick on Alex, but Alex is just, you know, she's Alex just always shows up. If you guys see Alex Franklin in here, she's like just this girl always shows up and is just such an example of this work and like Not, not to share too much of her story, but like Alex is just a, the perfect example of how we are as humans, right? Like we showed up for Alex in support and, and the way that when someone supports you fully, what comes up for you is there's no fucking way that they're actually here for me. They don't actually care about me. They're doing it because they have to, or because I'm paying them or whatever, right? Like all the justifications of why, because if you actually were allowed to fully receive support, it would completely decimate your life story. If people were actually there for you, it would screw up every belief that you've had. It would be one of those moments where your whole life kind of like has to be questioned, right? And in that letting go, And in that receiving of support, even if it's like a simple little sip, we call it medicine because it's the medicine that your individual system needs. And as it drinks, like, you know, so for Alex, it's like it was sip by sip and then something would right, like it would like sip by sip, then a layer would get hit and, you know, we we go into patterns. So it's like your pattern might be pull away disappear. Or like some of us have these very manipulative, little passive aggressive things that we do to push people away. You know what yours are. All of it because we're terrified. Deep down, we're just terrified. Can you create a distinction between like when when we say showing up for people, like they could hear that as you know, unloading your problems on them and then being like, oh, well, I'll listen to you, which which can be therapeutic in nature, for sure. You know, like talk therapy works. 
what we're talking about here, I could just do it, I guess, is a, is like an energetic exchange. You know, I want to really highlight what Elon said about think about when you were a little baby or very small and you bumped your head or you got frustrated. Again, we don't remember this, but if you play the other side too, because that's the thing, right? Guys, we are both the inner, we're the child and we're also the adult. We're the subjective point of view and we're the objective point of view. Most of us are stuck in an objective point of view. And it and it's conditioned into you. You are you most people's only consideration of well-being is what they see outside of themselves. Right? It's like the only way. It's like I have problems out here, I gotta resolve them out here, my relations are out here. If I have a health problem, I gotta deal with it out here. They we haven't been conditioned yet to turn in. Like this will be the century of turning in. Because there's a within and there's a without. And here's the issue with that is that without is not connected to God. <laughs> not really. Because this spark, this essence of you lives within you. That is what we call subconscious. We think it's like, we think of subconscious like it's part of our mind that's underneath what we can access. And I don't think that's how it is. It's just a part of you that you haven't been conditioned to be aware of yet. Okay. So you can, of the subconscious. And what you try and what you choose to do consciously with your time, with your awareness, greatly impacts your subconscious. Okay, so when we sit with another, what we're about to do here together in a few minutes, or we could just do it very soon here, what we do together is we can use the group field to re-template our subconscious because our subconscious doesn't need this to con concept ideas. We actually want to get underneath that layer, which is to go straight into the subtle, causal, sensorial aspect of you. And when we can touch those parts, our body naturally and our, our nervous system naturally reorganizes. And just like everything on, in our universe, everything in our ecosystem, when it's thrown out of balance, it has a checks and balance system. It, it naturally does things to orient itself back to neutrality. Our bodies have this too, and most people are not taking advantage of that. Again, so we say this all the time. It's the same aspect of you that when you cut your finger, you break a bone, or a woman gets pregnant, there's no directive that you consciously need to give the body to bring itself back to a neutral state, to heal that finger, to mend that bone, to basically bring life forth. It's, it's just a natural occurrence that is a divine intelligence that our body is connected to all the time. What we want to do is we want to cultivate practices where we're sitting in that, that divine intelligence as often as possible. And as in a, in a, yeah, that divinity as often as possible. And as we do that, we recultivate the energy of our system. We reconfigure literally our energetic body and that, ex and that from within expresses itself without. And that's why trying to work on your problems when you haven't changed the configuration of your energy doesn't work. The first step is to, what do I got to do? What are the practices that I got to cultivate every day to reorganize my system? So uh, for those of you guys, if you're into that, go ahead and say yes. And the chat box, let us know that that excites you. And we'll do, a, you know, like a 10 minute sit here together. And then for those of you guys who are interested in learning how to uh, take the next step in participating in our programs and why you might want to do that, we'll let you know um, uh, after that. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let me do that now. And, and I'll tell you why. So after we do this practice, uh, you guys, for those of you guys that want, you can just stay in the energy. Otherwise, we're going to go into this energetic space and then I'm going to pull you back out into your mental faculty. So very, very simple, guys. If you're enjoying these conversations, we could tell you that we are, you know, basically not even touching the surface of what's really available here because what we offer here is extremely experiential in nature. This is not something that you need to fill out a lot of notebooks or have great understanding for anything else like that. What we, what we call our practices is glimpse practice. So again, just think about how you were trained when you were a little kid. You looked at something, mom and dad pointed at it, and you had a glimpse. And over time, as you took more glimpses at an object or a concept, one day, just like language, it just naturally arises like a spring of wisdom inside of ourselves. There's actually not much we have to do to learn, right? It's just keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, and boom, like one day, it just starts making sense. And, and I can tell you, even when we used to teach people business, Online marketing, you learn, it's like learning a brand new language. For six months, the person is like, I don't understand what you're talking about. And then one day around that six month mark, 
suddenly it's like they just understand how everything works. It's spontaneous. They don't know why. All the languaging makes sense. Oh my God, these concepts make sense. It's the same thing no matter what faculty you want to learn. If you want more well-being in your life, you got to master well-being. If you want to make changes in the way that your reality is showing up, you need to understand that reality is a cause of the energy that you're carrying in your body. And so if you want reality to show up differently, the energy in your body needs to be reconfigured. And then you want to go master that. That might take months for you to do and really cultivate that. But is that worth your time investment? Is that worth your money investment? Is that worth your energy investment? We think so. Okay. So if you would like to participate uh, in our programs, honestly, the best way to do that is to just speak with somebody from our team. There are two ways you can do that. If you have more questions, um, you can just say, contact me in the chat box below. Even if you're watching this on replay, that'll still work. Um, or you just book a call with our team. Uh, they will take a very short application from you. It takes probably like three to five minutes to fill that out. Very, very simple. And then you can have a 15 minute uh, clarity call with our team, which basically means that they're going to look at your app, what you've done or haven't done in your personal development life. What are your goals? And can the things and experiences and programs and uh, everything that we teach here support the goals that you have? And they'll give you all the information and then you can decide whether it's a good fit for you. We can tell you that our, our introductory programs are, are very cost efficient and the value in them is well beyond what your investment is going to be. And we can pretty much um, offer you some kind of support at really any financial level. Um, and then, you know, once you've done that initial work, you can take a look at anything else that we do here. And of course, we want you in these programs long term because we know that the more well-being you cultivate in your life, the more transformation you're going to see and the more you're going to positively uh, impact yourself and others. And that's a huge goal for uh, us as a company. So uh, with that said, again, you can contact contact. Uh, you can type contact me or go to call Satori dot uh, com to book that clarity call. So. We'll take you through about a 10 minute exercise here, like a little group meditation, a little group work. So if you're not sitting, please find a seat. If you're holding a phone or anything like that, you'll want to put it down and just start closing your eyes. And we'll start really, really simple by just finding our breath. And so if you don't know what that means, you can begin by putting your awareness towards your nostrils and the underside of the nostrils where the air goes in and out and hits the upper lip. And you so often hear of people speaking of breath and the reason we go to the breath is because when we breathe deeply, what we're signaling to our body is that in this moment, we are safe. And we can tell you that we have never seen healing happen for anybody until the body is relaxed and brings itself to a place of safety. And many therapies will just go right into the impact work instead of bringing the body to safety first. So bring this context to your breath as I am literally bring, breathing in safety into my system. I'm helping my body downregulate and my nervous system downregulate. I'm sending signals of well-being. And realize that as your body relaxes, this is also where the intelligence begins to step in. And it is also where some things like sensations begin to bubble up in your system because the system goes, ah, finally, we're in a state where I can let go of this. So sometimes we feel emotion or tears or even anger or tightness. And all that is welcome here. However you show up is welcome here. And so see if you can permission even just a few 
percentages more, just permissioning whatever experience you're having, having, if there's tightness in the body, permission, the tightness, if there's frustration in your mind or angst or even confusion, that's welcome here too. We love you anyway. It has nothing to do with why you're acceptable or why we can offer you connection and love. How much of our lives are wrapped up in I'm only worthy when I perform. And just pose this question to yourself. What's here now when there are no problems to solve? So what's here now when there are no problems to solve? And see if there's any kind of shift with that awareness. And so as you do that, we're going to explore what it feels like to unlocalize our awareness. Many of us are conditioned to keep our awareness behind our eyes and in what feels like our brain. And so we confuse our awareness as if it is the mind when it's actually quite the opposite. Uh, the mind is actually the interpretation of awareness. It is not awareness itself. And so see if in this moment you can, without effort, bring your awareness in front of your face, just a few inches in front of your face. And somehow, some way, however you do that is the right way. There's no right or wrong way. So bringing the awareness to the front, just a few inches in front of your face. And then continue to bring that awareness to the right hand side of your head, a few inches away from the right ear. And then continue almost like you're making a halo around your head of awareness going to the back of the head a few inches. And then once you got that, to the left side of the head a few inches. Yep, there you go, you got it. And so now let that awareness start expanding away, away from your head. Some of you guys will find this very easy. Some of you guys may find this a little bit more challenging. There is a, a difference between being an internal or external system. So for those of you guys who are more external systems, you'll find this very easy. If you're an internal system, it might feel not as natural for you to do this. And so it's okay if you just find a few inches away from your head. Some of you guys will be a few feet. Some of you guys will be in a different state and some of you guys will be in a different galaxy as you do this. It, there's no wrong or right. What I do want you to notice is if there's any part of you that's efforting and see if you can let go of the effort and see if you can notice that awareness is less about efforting to move it. And it's more like an orienting to space. Like a, it's like a point of orientation or can feel like you're resting into it. And so those would be ways of knowing whether you have now transcended localized awareness. It feels like you're resting into this space or effortlessly orienting to the space. And then notice any changes or any shifts that you feel in your physiology, emotional state, mental state as we rest into this space and I'll be quiet here for a minute or two.
And so some qualities that you might notice here, again, we're just pointing and glimpsing. That's enough, even if it's just for a split second, that's enough. You might notice a buoyancy here, or what feels like going into the void, like a lack of content, perhaps. Usually people explore this as a like a white light and it feels quite empty. It feels very restful. And this for just a few minutes, see if you can turn from that awareness and look back towards your body down towards the center channel and specifically anywhere from the top of the throat all the way down towards the tail of your spine and so we're going to explore the throat the heart the solar plexus stomach area sacral and what you're looking for is anywhere where you're noticing sensation like an increased sense of sensation. There might be, for some of you guys, it'll be warmth. For some of you guys, it's tightness. So you might feel your throat closing a little bit or your heart squeezing, or maybe like a jabbing feeling in your stomach or just some kind of discomfort. And instead of trying to figure out exactly what's going on or putting any label on it, just see if you can take the perspective that what you're viewing is a sensation in the body. No more, no less. Something is arising and you're the one that's observing it. So again, we're still maintaining that unlocalized view around the head and then looking back at the body. And so again, you might notice some Squeezing or closing of the throat, top or bottom. You might notice uh, like a pinch or a squeezing in the heart. Maybe even notice some heat or coolness around there. Same thing with the solar plexus. Could feel like a pinching or a squeezing, a pushing, a pressure. Stomach, maybe it's a jabbing or sometimes even people describe it as being punched or kicked in there. Again, we're just looking for sensation and we're not trying to apply any mental acuity to it whatsoever. We're just here to watch. And then see if you can notice that you are actually not alone right now. Like we're actually here with you in presence and connected through our awareness. And if you can't feel anything in your body and it just feels numb, I want you to know that numbness is not an absence of sensation, that is the sensation. So you can go towards the numbness. And so ultimately what begins to happen as we sit in presence with these parts of our body and as we come into a more relaxed state and the nervous system begins to downregulate and we're in unlocalized awareness and with, quit, with practice this becomes more fluid is the same natural intelligence that I told you about that fixes cuts and men's bones. You know, again, notice that what the body is doing what our environment is doing is attempting to bring things back into neutrality. All we have to do is get out of the way. Like, for example, we know that if we stop polluting the planet, the planet would clean itself up and bring itself back to a neutral state with or without us on this planet. It's going to do that. The whole universe is built around this principle of bringing things to, towards balance. And so anytime that you put more energy into trying to resolve something, this principle of balance can't power your life and can't power healing in your body.
And so just for these last few moments, I'm going to ask you to just come and bring your awareness towards the back of your heart. So then in this collective, we can create some cohesiveness and you can experience what it's like when we're all bringing our awareness towards a single point. So we're all locating the back of our hearts with our awareness. And nice. Whew. And then somehow, some way, I want you to notice that there's people who are watching this right now and then people who will watch this later in replay and it doesn't matter because the only time is now. So it's always live for those that are experiencing it. That includes the energy and the intention that's here. So somehow, some way, allow your awareness to locate everybody who's going to participate in watching this now and also those who will watch this in the future. And let your awareness just locate them. And we're becoming aware as we do this of the one heart, the one heart that unites everybody. The divine intelligence that is the very source of who and what you are, this infinite, always awake, always aware awareness, awareness that is teaching itself, awareness that is omnipotent, all knowing. And we are simply connecting through our own system into this intelligent field, just like a computer connecting itself to the internet. You are the terminal and you are connecting yourself to that intelligence and all the other terminals that also are part of that intelligence. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, a little bit more. Again, notice that it doesn't matter whether you know people's names or locations. The mere intention through our awareness can very easily locate other consciousness. And so as we connect to that one heart, I'm gonna have this one body breathe together. So I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, we'll all take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I'll give you guys a, a few, a few reps to do that. So one, two, three, deep breath in one heart. And let it go. We'll do it two more times. One, two, three, breathe in as one. And let it go. Last one. One, two, three, deep breath in, one body, one breath. And let it go. And so as you listen to my voice, I want you to know that just learning how to unlocalize your awareness outside of your mind is not only the beginning, it is stepping into a higher state of consciousness. And there are many, many, many layers to this and different ways to leverage the different energetic fields that are part of the existence of a multidimensional human which is what we're starting to come to the realization of, because that is what we are. And so just that daily practice of taking a few minutes, whether it's when you sit down for work or in your morning practices, or even when you're speaking to somebody, you will find that the moment you unlocalize from your conditioned mind, that immediately 
there's a different quality to the way that you observe. There's a different quality to the way that life arises. There's a different quality to the way that you can be in your awareness. There's a different quality into what you can observe. And that includes to what is happening inside of you and outside of yourself. If you continue to be conditioned in a local localized mind, you will continue to live in an objective reality where it seems like the only solution is to fix things and meddle in them. If you begin to cultivate this practice of coming out of mind and unlocalizing yourself, you are going to start having significant understandings and level of wisdom that most of humanity has not come to. One simple practice. We have a meditation where I walk you through this inside the group. You're welcome to leverage it. If you really want to begin learning this stuff, understanding how to use these practices for mastery, how you work with other systems who have cultivated groundedness, stability, well-being, vitality in their systems, and you want to sit with those people and template their bodies and template their energy systems, and this is how your body is going to learn and how your consciousness is going to learn, and you want to learn how to do all that, that's why Satori Prime is here. That's where our programs are all about. And we have a myriad of programs from level one all the way through level four that take you through these experiences of setting foundations, introducing practices, and then learning how to do self-to-self work, self-to-other work, self-to-group work. And you got to understand that at every level, the self, other, and group is where both our traumas can ha- have happened and also where the healing can happen, where your body can get new information, your consciousness can get new information, and it can transform, heal, and grow in, in ways that most people have yet to experience and are just beginning to awaken to. So if you want to play that game, you want to at least explore how to play that game, again, you can put contact me in the chat box below and someone from the team will reach out to you. Or if you're ready to just have a conversation, that's probably the best avenue. Go ahead, go to callsatori.com, book your 15-minute clarity call with our team and have a conversation with them and see if this is a a good fit for you, what we're doing here. And then you can choose in and see if uh, you want to participate, okay? We love you guys very much. Feel free to sit in this energy um, and enjoy it. Reminder that we will be off the next two weeks. However, we're here for you. If you guys do need support at any time, please uh, don't hesitate to post in the group or reach out to the team or book a call at absolutely uh, any time. We'll, uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, we really want to help you guys as much as we can set up for the next year in a powerful way. So with that said, uh, happy holidays to all you guys. Happy New Year's to you and your loved ones. Wishing you uh, only the best. And again, if we're here, if you can, we can support you in any way. Please let us know. Can't hear you for some reason, bro. Sorry. Uh, one last there thing. You go. Even though we are not going to be here, our team's going to be here. We might post, but we're just not going to do any lives. Um, and a last reminder that our level one training program, which is a six week live, uh, intermixed live and, and uh, pre recorded trainings, you can still get at the 2021 price through to the end of the year. Once the new year, January 1st, happens. The price of the program will more than double. Um, So if you have wanted to give yourself the gift of life, um, definitely get in touch with our team. Make sure you get that in the next couple of weeks here. uh, Because come January 1st, you will, for the same program, be paying more than double. So just keep that in mind. All right, friends. All the best to you and yours health and well-being. We'll speak to you soon. Love you guys. Bye, everybody.